We are talking about direct variation. So let's recall linear functions. They have the following slope, which our slope is found by doing a graph rise over run. And it's also found by doing change of y over change in x. So those are two ways to find slope. And we also have that formula where you subtract your y, subtract your x's. Our equation for linear is y equals mx plus b. So that's a linear function. So direct variation is similar to a linear function, but it's a special type of linear function. That goes to the origin. So if it goes through the origin, our y-intercept will be zero, which that means that the b is zero. <clears throat> the equation's just written as y equals kx. So instead of mx, it's kx. And we don't have a plus or minus a number. It's just y equals the slope times x, basically. k is called your constant of variation, though. Kind of like your proportional relationship. I learned a lot about that last year. Where it goes through the origin, it's positive, it's going uphill. Um, K is going to be found by just dividing a Y value by an X value. Y over X. And this is kind of like slope. The only difference is you're doing the Y value divided by X value. Anytime that whenever you divide your y by your x on all your values and you get the same value, k, like um, if k equals 2 on every single division of y over x, then it's a direct variation kind of problem. Okay, so we are going to look at some examples, determine whether or not the equation represents direct variation. It says solve for y. If it is in the form of y equals kx, then it's direct variation. So draw your line down your equal sign. We've been doing this a lot, just solving for y, moving things around, solving for y. Let's subtract 2x on both sides. And we get 3y equals negative 2x. Then we would need to divide by 3. And we get y equals... 2 over 3x. So for it to be a direct variation, it needs to just be a y equals kx. This is it. It just has a value times x. So we're going to write yes. Then write k equals negative 2 thirds. So x and y are directly proportional to each other. Okay, the next one, 2y plus 3 equals 4x. We need a solve for y to see if it's direct variation. Can't combine an x with a non-x. Then we divide by 2. Three over 2 is 1.5, so I'm just going to write that as a decimal. So this is written as y equals mx plus b. So it is not direct variation. And the reason would be because this is not a zero. It says minus 1.5. So it's not going to go through the origin like direct variation problems do. Determine whether or not the table represents a direct variation. So earlier, whenever I was telling you all about k equals y over x, We'll divide y over x and see if we get the same value all throughout the table. So if the answer is the same for each ordered pair, there's direct variation. So if k equals y over x and it equals the same thing, then it is a direct variation. So see how this is a y and this is an x. So we're going to do it for each pair. 
So we'll do 10.5 over 3. So it's y, which is 10.5, over 3. So we'll use our calculator. 10.5 divided by 3. So you need out your calculator. So it equals 3.5 for the first one. So we'll do the next one, the next pair. So K equals 17.5 over 5. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, 28 over 8. So they all come out to be the same. K equals 3.5 for all of them. So, is this direct variation? You'd say yes. I'm going to put yes. I'm just going to put DV, direct variation. And we could write our equation as y equals kx. y equals 3.5x. Okay, let's look at the next page. Which equation is not, like the word not, an example of direct variation? Look at all your answer choices. Figure out the one that is not direct variation. What makes A not? Yep, that one makes it not. It should be plus zero or nothing. See how all of these are just y equals kx, y equals kx, y equals kx. This is written as y equals mx plus b. So this one is not direct variation. So what about the next one, which is not an example of direct variation? So let's go through one at a time and see if it's direct variation or not. So the first one says y equals x. It, it's written as y equals kx, because what would k be on this one? It'd just be one, so this is this is fine. Um, this one, right, because what we would end up doing is this, right? 3x equals negative 2, or 3y. Yeah, negative 2 over 3. So that one's fine. The next one. Yep, y equals kx. Okay, what about this last one? Yeah, because we, yeah, we'd end up having this. And then we'd end up dividing by 6. Yeah, we still have a value here, so it's written as a y equals mx plus b equation. 30 divided by 6 would be 5, so plus 5. Yeah, so this one is the wrong one. It is not direct variation because of that plus 5. So look at how these are all written. They're either written as y equals kx. Or they're written as 2x or ax plus by equals 0. You don't want it equaling another number because then that number will never get canceled out, which will make your y-intercept different. All right, look at 3 through 5. Name the constant of variation k for each equation. K 
Okay, it's just the number that's being multiplied by x. So the first one, five. So right, k equals five. K equals one half. And the last one, k equals two thirds, negative two thirds. Those are pretty simple. You're just looking for what the k is, y equals kx. All right, let's look at our direct variation problems. This will be similar to what you'll see, see on actual tests. So write a direct variation equation that relates to the two variables and solve. Suppose y varies directly as x. That means there's a direct variation. That's all that means. Anytime you see, suppose y varies directly as x, that just means you have a direct variation equation. y equals 16 when x equals 8. Find y when x equals 16. So we can actually set up, anytime you have a direct variation, you can set up a proportion. So remember setting up proportions. You just have to make sure that you set it up in the same order. What I like to do is I just like to do k is y over x. And then you can do your proportion y over x. So using what they've given us, look for y and x. So I'm going to put, I just want to find what my k is first. That would be 16 over 8. So k is 2. y is 2 times bigger than x. Look at that. y is 16, x is 8. y is 2 times bigger. And that's where that 2 shows up, 2 times bigger. Um, but really the easiest way to do this is do it as a proportion. y over x equals y over x. Y'all have seen those proportions, right? Then you plug in numbers. When y is 16, so it'd be 16 over when x is 8, find y when x is 16. I'm going to rewrite it because I don't like the way that looks. 16 over 8 equals y over 16. This is y over x, and this is x. How do you solve a proportion like that? How? How is 8 going to become 16? Mm -hmm. 8 times 2 gets a 16. Because these are equivalent fractions. So what is 16 going to be times 2 to give us y? Is y equal then 32? So our solution is y equals 32. Y'all remember doing this? You could also cross multiply and divide. Do y'all remember doing that? Yeah, you'd multiply your two numbers and divide by the other one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's look at the next one. Suppose y varies directly as x. When y equals 21, x equals 3. We're not going to worry about finding k. We are just going to set up and solve a proportion. We're going to do the same thing, though. y over x. So it will be 21 over 3 equals. Set it up. Where is 42 going to go? Top because it's a y. You got to follow that same pattern y over x and then y over x. So my x is going to go here. So we can solve this the same way. You can either cross multiply and divide, multiply 3 times 42 and divide by 21, or you can look and see 21 times what is going to give me 42. Yeah, times 2 
gives us 42. So what is, we're going to do the same thing on bottom. So 3 times 2. Or you can cross multiply and divide. So let me show you that if you would rather do that. You multiply 42 times 3, because these are diagonals, and then divide by the other number that's being multiplied by x. So I get the same answer. 3 times 42 divided by 21. Let's look at the next one. Suppose y varies directly as g, I mean v, so v over g. So v is 36, g is 4. Find v when g equals 11. How do we solve this? What's one way that we could do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would need to find out four times what gets me 11 would be 2.75. So then you do the same thing here. Let me find one. So again, 36 times 2.75. Oh, yeah. But if you want to do the cross multiply and divide way, you can. 30, uh, 11 times 36, you know, those are your diagonals. Then divide by 4. 99. All right, the next one, suppose A varies directly with B, so you're going to put A over B. That tells you what to put over what. A is 7, B is 2, find when A is 21. I mean, A is 21, what is B? So decide which way you want to work it, and you work it that way. I see it as 7 times 3 to get 21. You know, 7 times 3 gives us 21. Yeah, because it's A. A is 21. Oh, yeah, you got to be real careful. Yeah, cross multiply and divide is fine. You decide the method that works best for you. It's common fractions. So you look and see 7 over 2 is going to give me 21 over something else. So instead of reducing by dividing by a number, you're multiplying a number to make it bigger. And so whatever you do on one, you have to do on the other. So that's why we get B equals 6 that way. You can do it either way. I'm, I'm okay with either one. All right, let's go to our word problems. At a local grocery store, the cost of apples varies directly, directly with the weight of the apples. If a five pound bag costs $7.87, which of the following best represents the cost of a three pound bag of apples? It tells us cost varies directly with weight. So I can do cost over weight. And set up a proportion that way. All a proportion is is two equal fractions. So our first one, what's the cost of what they've given us? Seven eighty-seven for how much pounds? Five. And 
what did they want us to find? So I can use any variable. I can use X. I can use C. Yeah, I think C is good. And then what goes on the bottom? Three pounds. Yep. So you decide the method that works the best for you. It's going to be money. So it's a little less than half. So, so think about money. It's not going to be more money. It's going to be less money because it's less pounds. So 0. 0.6 times the 787. Mm -hmm. Cross multiply and divide or use your common ratios. And I got 4.722. But this is talking about money, so how should we round that? E equals four dollar and seventy-two cents. I do need y'all to write this in words, though. It's my favorite part. It says, "Which of the following?" Um, well, not which of the following. What is the cost of a three-pound bag? A three-pound bag costs four seventy-two. So make sure you write that in words. Okay, let's do the next problem. The distance a truck travels varies directly with number of hours. So distance varies directly with hours. So that tells us we're going to put distance on top, hours on bottom. A truck travels 268 miles in four hours. So 268 is the distance because it's in miles. Um, four is the hours <clears throat> equals, if the truck continues to travel at the same rate, how long will it take the truck to go 938 miles? So 938 will go on top. We want to know hours, H. So is it going to take more or less? More. It's going to take more. Yeah, quite a bit more, more than double. So it's 3.5. So you divide that and find 3.5 is our constant. So times. So 14. So we need to write it in words. So it says, how long will it take the truck to go 938 miles? It will. Okay, 14 hours to drive, 138 miles. Last problem, the mass of a substance, the so mass varies directly with volume. So mass over volume. The volume of 100 kilograms of substance is 80 liters. What is the volume in liters of 3.2 kilograms? So kilograms is mass. So that'd be 100 kilograms. 80 liters is the volume. The volume of because that's mass over volume, equals, we have 3.2 kilograms. That's going to go on top. Over what? B. B. So this was kilograms. This was kilograms. Sometimes it's easier to look at what the um, units of measure is. Is liters. We want to find volume in liters. Cross multiply and divide or use the other method. Mm 
you divide, you get 0 0.032, and then multiply that times the 80. It'll be pretty small. So we know it's going to be less than 3.2 because 100 is bigger than the 80. It's going to be 2.56. So it says, what is the volume of 3.2 kilograms? So in words, the volume is 2.56 liters. Wind mass is 3.2 kilograms. You can go ahead and glue this in. 